Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my best of beauty for 2019. I'm going to be talking about the best products that I tried out in 2019, whether it's something old that I refell in love with or a new launch of 2019 that I just couldn't stop using. All of these products, in my opinion, are the best and also the most used in 2019. So a few of these products might be familiar to you from my last year, 2018 yearly favorites because I still love these products. They are still what's working for me. Even though looking at my pile of products right now, a lot of these things are new and unique to 2019, and there only are a few spillover products from 2018 favorites. So I really hope that you guys enjoy. I have a feeling that this is definitely going to be a long one, so sit back, relax, and if you guys want to see my best of beauty of 2019, my most loved and used products of last year, make sure to keep on watching. So just to keep everything nice and organized and cozy, cohesive. I'm going to be talking about all of these products in the same order that I would do my makeup. So starting off with eyebrows, my absolute favorite eyebrow pencil of 2019 was the Fenty Beauty Brow MVP. Now I know to some of you this might be a surprise that it's not my Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz because I'm pretty sure that's been in my best of beauty since 2016 as my favorite brow product, but I think that Fenty Beauty is slowly taking the place of my Anastasia one, at least this year, especially in the second half of the year. I wear this in the shade medium brown and it's been perfect. I love how it looks. It's like that perfect mix of like an ashy brown, but it also has like a nice warm chocolatey aspect to it. I just love everything about this. It makes filling in my eyebrows so quick and easy. And I am very, very particular about my eyebrow pencil formula. I don't like it too creamy and waxy to where I could get like a Sharpie brow really quick or it like slips and it's all slidey like in my brows, but I also don't like a very dry formula where I have to press down really hard and then the brow pencil breaks or something like that. The Fenty Beauty one is so, so perfect. If you guys can see that on the back of my hand, I really don't think you can. It just gives like the easiest, most effortless hair-like stroke. So along with the Fenty Beauty pencil, I am still obsessing over this Profusion Cosmetics Brow Powder. I believe I did talk about this in my last year Best of Beauty, but it has been such a game changer for my brows. I swear my brows have never looked as put together and fluffy and structured yet natural looking until I went ahead and decided discovered like really falling in love with a brow powder. I've always kind of toyed around with brow powders, whether it was like the e.l.f. one or the Anastasia one. Those were always ones that I liked, but I never fell in love with a brow powder until this Profusion one. I know I've talked about this a ton this past year in 2019. Like I said, I used it a ton throughout 2018 as well, and it's just the best. Definitely transformed my brow game, and I don't think I could ever go back to not using a brow powder. If you guys can see, I'm obsessed with this color in my brows. I typically like to put this one in the front of my brows, the darker shade at the end, and I love this as a highlight shade. I really don't use the wax. That's not really my favorite type of brow product, but the rest of this... It is so amazing. Definitely, definitely recommend this. I hope it's still available. I know Profusion kind of tends to like come out with new things and create like new sets. So if I could find this, definitely check the links down below for actually all of the products that I'm talking about today. So when it came to 2019 and the launch of eyeshadow palettes, Oh my goodness, I actually feel like the last two years, 2018 and 2019, there has just been such an overflow and oversaturation in the industry, especially when it comes to two products and those are eyeshadow palettes and foundations. So I found myself feeling very overwhelmed by the eyeshadow palette launches recently. I narrowed it down to three of my favorites that I have been obsessively using over and over again this year. And the first one, which definitely comes in my number one slot is the Jackiina and Anastasia Beverly Hills palette. I have never been so obsessed and so in love with an eyeshadow palette like I am with this Jackie Ina palette. I use this a lot on camera. I use this almost every single day off camera. It is just my perfect everyday easy look or even when I want to glam it up. I cannot think of anything better to use. When I first saw the campaign for this, when I first saw the inside of the palette and the swatches, I just had a gut feeling that this was going to be something I would absolutely love. I love the mixture of warm shades, lighter shades, a couple of really wearable and fun colorful shades. The only thing that I could say this palette is maybe 
lacking would be like a matte brow bone shade and a black shade, but at the same time, I feel like that also makes this palette so unique because it's different. It doesn't look like every single other neutral palette on the market. Of course, I'm sure you guys know that Anastasia Beverly Hills has my favorite formula. These are very pigmented, very buttery and smooth and creamy. I will give you guys a couple of swatches so you guys can see. The formula on these are just absolutely incredible. The mattes are like not patchy at all. This one right here was literally just like one swipe as well as all of the rest of these and look how much pigment is left on my finger. I definitely think swatches can tell some but I feel like these perform even better on the eyes so you guys just have to try it to know what I mean about Anastasia formula and I'm so happy they kept it like their same standard formula that I've always loved. The next palette that I actually used a ton in 2019 that I honestly didn't think I would be so obsessed with when I first got it was the Sultry palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills and I was so presently surprised at how much I love this palette. First of all, the packaging is some of the most beautiful on any palette that I think launched in 2019 in my opinion, but the inside, ugh, it's like so beat up you guys. It's very well loved and very well used, but I didn't think I would love this as much as I do because this was very much primarily a cool tone palette, but I use this so often. This to me was that perfect palette whenever I wanted to get extra glam, maybe for like an event, or if I was going out, not that I like party much or anything like that, but just if I was like going out to dinner or something like that and I wanted to look a little bit more nighttime and glam, this palette was everything and more and it really has helped me be more comfortable with cool tones. I don't have this on today, but I do have a pretty cool tone look on today and this palette has really helped me become more comfortable in cool tones and I love that I really branched out in 2019 in that way. I I feel like these two palettes actually complemented each other really, really well. And these were like most of the shades that I reached for in 2019. There was honestly like no need for me to reach for any other palette. Of course I did because I have so many in my collection, but I could literally just use these two and be set for 2020 as well. The last and final palette that I want to discuss that was one of my favorites in 2019 was the ColourPop Sweet Talk palette. A little bit more of an affordable option compared to the Anastasia palettes, but the quality and the formula is just as amazing. So again, this is their Sweet Talk palette and it is beautiful, has way more of those warm tones, pinky shades, peachy shades, definitely more shades, like I said, I gravitate to during the warmer months when I want something a little bit more light and fresh. The formula on ColourPop eyeshadows are so up to par with Anastasia Beverly Hills or other high-end shadows and they are seriously like a quarter of the price. As much as I love ABH and I will forever like swear by those palettes, do I think you need them if you can get ColourPop palettes instead? I honestly don't think so because the formula is just as good. Very, very buttery mattes and one thing that I love about ColourPop is that their glitters are so glittery. Definitely I would say be careful, use a glitter glue because you don't want it like falling in your eye. And one of my favorite things about this Sweet Talk palette in particular is that it actually has a Super Shock shadow pressed in it. And if you guys are viewers of mine, then you know that Super Shocks are like my favorite lid shade. And the glitter doesn't look like the best on the hand. I would definitely say press it on your eye like over some glitter glue, but look how amazing those look. That matte again was just one swipe, so buttery. I wanna use this again. I have put this down since the colder months have been here, but this is fun. I totally need to use this again. Lastly for eyes in my 2019 Best of Beauty, I wanna give a huge shout out to these LA Girl Shockwave Neon Eyeliners. I love these and these definitely gave me a new appreciation for eyeliners. I'm definitely not an eyeliner person. I honestly rarely ever wear it. And it's more of like a forgetful thing just because it hasn't been in my routine for so long now. 
I honestly just forget to do it, but these LA Girl Shockwave liners have been so fun, again, especially in the warmer months over the spring and summer. These are just some of the most creamy, pigmented, and long-lasting liners that I've ever tried. Actually, I do have one more thing to mention when it comes to eye products that I loved in 2019. This is more of like a tool, though, and these are the e.l.f. Line & Define eye tapes. I absolutely love these, and I cannot stop recommending them and talking so highly of them because they are such an easy and also incredibly affordable way to get better at eyeshadow and just help you learn eyeshadow or winged liner or anything like that. So basically, instead of using something like scotch tape when learning like a winged liner or eyeshadow like to get that nice sharp edge, I discovered these through Juicy Jazz on YouTube and these have changed everything. They are so comfortable around the eye. They're like a really thin and light gauze material. They have just enough stick to where they will stick down, but they are so easy and light when pulling it off. This whole pack of the e.l.f. Line and Define eye tapes comes with 40 strips and it is only $2, but to get these to stretch longer, you could just cut each sheet in half and then you get 80 strips for $2 and you could use a half on each eye if your eye shape is like okay with that. These were like truly life-changing when it came to doing wings and everything. I used to be really good at wings freehand, but ever since I stopped doing them every single day, it has become more of a struggle for me and these save the day. Now I'm officially going to move on to the best face products of 2019. First off, I wanna go ahead and start with primer because in 2019, I found the primer that I've been looking for since I first got into primers, and that of course is the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I've talked about this a bunch on my channel throughout the year. I feel like especially recently, but this is just the best primer. I won't blab on and on about it, but if you guys haven't tried it, this definitely is a must try. All the hype and the attention that it got in 2019 was for good reason. This is a primer that I feel everyone would love. I kind of have a combo skin type. I'm more dry now in the winter, more oily in the summer, and of course susceptible to like sweating and my makeup melting off. And I find that this primer is a universal formula for all year round. The first one that I ever got is almost empty. I don't know if you guys can see, there's definitely a lot of pan showing at the bottom there. And then I also was working on a second one. I don't know why I have two open simultaneously, but also I made a huge dent in that one as well because I use this literally every single day. There is no primer that I found that's better than this. And one of my favorite things about it and one of the reasons why I love this so much is that I don't have to combine this with another primer. It goes beautifully combined with another primer. Today I have it mixed with the Milani Prime Perfection Hydrating Primer. Primer, but I don't have to because this is like the perfect mix of hydration while being a pore covering and pore smoothing and texture smoothing on the skin. It is all in one, so I have two of those. And I also recently just got this Best of Elf kit for Christmas, and there's another one in there as well. The next primer that I really loved in 2018 was the Catrice Cosmetics Prime and Fine Poreless Blur Primer. They're good by pores, long lasting soft focus effect. I was really into pore poreless primers, I guess, in 2019. I actually put this head to head with the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer in a poreless primer showdown. If you guys wanna go check that out here on my channel, it was really interested to see how those two compared head to head. So definitely check the card right here or you could go after this video is over. This kept my foundation matte, you guys. It was very poreless, very smoothing, but it definitely was more of a mattifying primer. This was beautiful, especially under a more luminous foundation that tend to like emphasize some texture. This was always my go-to primer for that. So I don't know if you guys will be able to see the Catrice primer. It just has such a smoothing element to it. Like right there, it is so soft. I wish you guys could feel it because it literally feels like I'm touching like velvet on the back of my hand. In 2019, I really fell in love with a way more glowy look to this skin. I loved looking fresh and hydrated and I just always wanted to look as glowy as possible. And my favorite spray this year was the Catrice Illuminating Prime and Fine Dewy Glow Fixing Spray. I loved the original fixing spray. I might have mentioned that in my 2018 favorites. I'm not sure. The Dewy Glow one is so much better in my opinion. It leaves the skin super glowy, like 
ultra glowy but it's not glittery it just helps you look like really healthy and plump and in the winter this really helps take away the look of any dryness from powder and it just makes everything glow so much more basically I saw a couple of my favorite youtubers using this and that's what really intrigued me I believe Taylor Wynn, formerly known as that Taylor, and Raw Beauty Christy loved this, and I love, and I always love how their foundation looks. And those are two YouTubers that always went for a more like glowy, natural look on the skin. I knew I would love this when I saw them using it. When you shake this up, there is definitely like, not sparkles, but you definitely see something like shimmery floating around in the liquid. But don't be scared because that does not translate on the skin whatsoever. It just leaves your skin looking amazing. Trust me, you guys, ever since I started using this, I always get so many compliments on my skin. This is a great spray. I believe it's like seven or eight dollars from Ulta. So let's go ahead and talk foundation. I have a couple of really standout products when it comes to foundation in 2019. The first one that I want to quick get out of the way because I talk about this all the time it is no secret that this is my favorite foundation ever that is the Maybelline super stay foundation I mentioned this maybe two years consecutively for my best of beauty and it is definitely a huge winner I am currently wearing this in the shade 118 light beige and this is my all-time favorite foundation it just has the most full coverage way of looking natural on the skin and remaining comfortable, lasting a long time. I've worn this for like 15 plus hours at a time and it is incredible, so enough said, you guys know I love this. Although I love the Maybelline Superstay so much, I also, like I just mentioned, love more of a glowy look. I love looking fresh and hydrated and I found two other foundations that really do that for me. One of those being the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear Foundation and I wear mine in the shade 420 true beige i believe this foundation launched early 2019 i was a little confused when i was planning this video because i could have sworn that i mentioned this in last year's best of beauty but it did launch in early 2019 or really really late 2018. this foundation is incredible it has buildable coverage it's not full coverage right off the bat but it definitely can get there the name is very self-explanatory fresh wear it looks super fresh on the skin definitely a Again, one of those foundations that has a really nice coverage but doesn't necessarily look like you're wearing foundation on the skin has a really great glow to it throughout the day and it also does wear for a very long time I haven't tried it for 24 hours I don't think I would wear my makeup for 24 hours but I have worn this easily for like 8 to 12 hours or more and it looks beautiful throughout the day and the next and last foundation that I fell in love with in 2019 I'm sure you guys maybe might be able to guess I'm not sure but it is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation and I finally found my favorite high-end foundation. I wear mine in the shade 210N. If you guys want to see me wearing this and see how it applies and stuff like that, definitely make sure to go check out my recent everyday winter makeup routine. This is the foundation that I've been wearing every single day, especially for more of like a light fresh look with just like some mascara and lots of highlighter. This foundation is beautiful for that. I know ABH is more of a high-end brand, but this foundation packaging feels borderline luxury to me, like a Chanel or like a Tom Ford. It's very heavy. I love the design component of it. I think it's so sleek, but like so modern and fun. It's probably one of my favorite packagings of a foundation that I've seen in a while. It also has a pump, which makes it amazingly easy to use. And also same with the L'Oreal Freshwear. It also has a pump, which adds a lot of bonus points to a foundation that is my favorite type of component. So as far as concealer goes in 2019, I really still liked the same ones that I was using in 2018. For example, I'm still obsessed with my Too Faced Born This Way one. This is my favorite concealer ever. This has the most coverage of any concealer that I've ever tried. So just to keep it short and sweet, that is still one that is my top, top concealer of 2019. Also another repeat from 2018 are the ColourPop No Filter Concealers. These concealers are only $6 each and they are incredible. These are very, very full coverage. I would say that they are pretty comparable to the Too Faced Concealer. So although these two are spillovers from 2018, they are repeat products. They still deserved a spot in this video because I use them a ton. I don't know if you guys can see, but these ColourPop concealers are very well loved. These are all like almost empty. I use them 
insanely a lot. Like, they're just so good, both of these formulas. However, there is one concealer that launched very, very early in 2019 that I totally fell in love with, and that is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Instant Retouch Concealer. It is so creamy and buildable. If you do one layer, it's really great for every day. It gives you more of a fresh look with just like some mascara. It's really pretty. Or you can also build up this concealer to be pretty full coverage under the eyes with like a full glam, full on eyeshadow look. I'm not exactly sure if this concealer claims to be hydrating, but this is one of the most hydrating and emollient concealers that I've ever tried. It blends out effortlessly and it's very, very forgiving under the eyes. I think if you guys struggle with a lot of fine lines or wrinkles or texture on your under eyes, this is very emollient and creamy, so it's going to be really forgiving on those areas. I'll show you guys a little swatch. I wear mine in the shade 185, which is perfect for under my eyes. A really pretty standard light neutral shade. My hand is a little bit darker than my face, but this matches my face really well. It just blends out to be like super creamy and emollient. I could just feel the hydration as it's working into my hand. If you guys have dry skin and you weren't a fan of the original Pro Filter Foundation, I definitely wouldn't be scared of this. I thought this was going to be a lot more fast drying and matte than it actually was, because I did go into trying this thing thinking that it was like the original Pro Filter, and it's nothing like that at all. This is just a really great concealer, my favorite concealer that launched in 2019 for sure. I quickly wanna mention my favorite sponge ever and my favorite way to apply all of these base products, and that is most definitely the e.l.f. Total Face Sponge. The only word that I have for this sponge, you guys, is incredible. It is the best sponge that I have ever tried. In my opinion, there is absolutely no need to go spend $20 on a beauty blender when you could spend four to $5 on this sponge and the quality is top notch. I promise you guys, try this sponge and you will not be disappointed. It makes my base products beautiful. It makes everything even full coverage. It doesn't soak up any product. So I just quickly wanted to mention that favorite of 2019 by far, like one of my top favorites for sure. In 2019, I found myself to be really into pressed powder which is different for me because I've always loved to set my face with loose powders. I still do. I absolutely still love my Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. That's always my holy grail. But in 2019, I was very, very into this ColourPop No Filter Sheer Pressed Powder. I have hit major pan on this powder, but it was just really great. It sets my face very nicely. I wouldn't say it makes my makeup last as long as a loose powder. Definitely nothing does. That like really locks all of the makeup into the skin, but it was just a really nice and quick set, and I love how velvety and smooth it made the skin look. I don't think you guys can see because it is like a really sheer powder with a little bit of a tint, but I'm sure you could see by the pan how much I love to use this. It made my skin super soft and velvety and I really just loved this powder in 2019. And along with the ColourPop one, I absolutely fell in love with the Makeup Revolution Bacon Blot Powder. This is their banana powder. I use banana powder for so much every single day that I do my makeup, at least a full face of makeup, whether it's it's brightening my under eyes, setting my concealer on my lids, carving out my contour, brightening up the center of my nose or my chin. It is just a really versatile makeup product for me, and I hit pan and used up every single banana powder in all of my contour palettes. So I finally said enough is enough. Next time you go to Ulta, look for a single banana powder, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money either, and I came across this one, and it's perfect. I don't know if you guys can see. I think you can see this one. Oh yeah, just how brightening and smooth and creamy this is. Now I want to go ahead and talk about some cheek products. I have to say, you guys, there weren't a lot of newer cheek products that I really fell in love with in 2019. Bronzers, blushes, and highlighters were something that I used like the same thing over and over again, the same things that I really loved in 2018. And I didn't want to be too repetitive, so I'm only mentioning a couple of new ones that I tried this year. So my first favorite for cheek products is the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I know I have mentioned this in the past and it's not a brand new launch, but I wanted to specifically mention this bronzer because I tried it in the shade Deep Bronzer. I have been using the original bronzer shade for years and it was just way too light on my skin. Looking back at videos when I used that bronzer, I felt like I could barely even see it. 
I actually think I have it. Let me see. I don't even know if you guys will be able to see the original bronzer shade on camera, but this is deep bronze and this is the most like perfect undertone for a bronzer. It's like a true brown bronzer. It's not too cool tone and gray or pink and it's not too warm and orangey red. It is just like a really nice in-between color bronzer. One of my favorite colors that I've tried on my skin tone so I use this a ton. Next for cheek products, I totally fell head over heels for this NARS Motutane face palette. I'm really sad to say that I don't think this is available anymore. I think Nordstrom might have some stock left of it. These powders are so luxurious. It made doing cheek products and these three steps very easy bronzer blush and highlighter I know it might be shocking to some of you but this was the first time ever that I actually tried NARS Laguna and I know it's so popular so that might sound super crazy but I just loved this palette this was actually the first year that I actually I would say played around with a lot of NARS formula in general when it came to their cheek products so this is their bronzer in Laguna their blush in Manava and their highlighter in Makatia which is incredible I'm sure you guys can see that sheen right there and it's such a perfect like light champagne shade. I won't lie to you guys, I won this in a giveaway. This was sent to me. I probably would have never purchased it otherwise or given NARS formula a chance, but I'm so happy that I got the chance to try it out because these are some of my favorite cheek products. They feel so luxurious. They last all day. Laguna, again, is another great bronzer shade for me. The blush is like a really nice cutesy kind of everyday pink and the highlighter is actually really, really intense I know you guys saw it on my finger but I'll show you guys on the cheek right there it adds such an intensity to the cheeks Ooh, you guys see that right how much more intense that made my highlighter it's insanely good this product I definitely will do my best to find this and try to link it down below for you guys if not I will link the products separately if they are available separately I know for sure that you can buy NARS Laguna separately which by the way check your local TJ Maxx I've seen a ton of Laguna bronzer and TJ Maxx for a great price but I will link the highlighting powder and the blush down below if they are available so I totally fell in love with the Anastasia Beverly Hills and Reezy High highlighter like so much of the makeup community did this is really just such a perfect like light champagne gold shade I just feel like this is a highlighter that will look so stunning on so many skin tones and it just has that perfect intense and wet yet glowing from within formula that everyone loves it doesn't have a single speck of any glitter or any shimmer and I feel like you could really pile this highlighter on and it just gets more beautiful and more beautiful every single time. Just the way the product sits in the pan, it was poured and pressed so beautifully and I think this was a huge favorite for a lot of people in 2019 because it was just that good. The last thing I wanna go over today for my best of beauty are lip products and 2019 was definitely the year that I fell in love with lip liner. Before 2019, I definitely would use lip liner once in a while but I never considered it a staple in my makeup routine a lot of the time I would totally pass it up but for me in 2019 lip liner was an absolute must and these are three of my favorites so the first one that I love that I wore a ton this year and that I'm wearing today is the Mac traditional lip pencil in the shade boldly bare you guys are definitely gonna see a pattern in a lot of the lip shades that I love this year a lot of them are traditional nudes whether they're more pinky or peachy or like a brownie nude but I love the MAC formula I realized in 2019 that I prefer a wooden sharpenable pencil opposed to a mechanical one I feel like they just overall perform better and last longer as well so the MAC one was my first favorite the second one is very similar to the MAC one I would actually call these a dupe and that is the LA girl perfect precision lip liner in the shade sugar and spice the colors are a little bit different but the formulas are very similar Similar. The LA Girl one in Sugar and Spice, which is this one right here, is just a little bit more of a brown shade compared to MAC Boldly Bare. But two of my favorite liners, very like 
90s, I guess you could say. And the last lip liner, which is a little bit different, is the House Laboratories, which was Lady Gaga's makeup line. And this one is in the shade and point. Out of all three of these, I think the House Laboratory ones is my all time favorite though, just because it does have more of that peachy undertone. And it also is very creamy on the lips, way more creamy than the other two. So this one right here is end point from House Laboratories. Boldly Bare from MAC, and Sugar and Spice from LA Girl. As far as traditional lipstick goes, I rotated between a lot of my old favorites. Again, MAC Velvet Teddy, Wet n Wild Bare It All, ColourPop What's Your Sign. So I didn't want to like go too in depth on all of those. If you guys want to check out like past Best of Beauty videos, I talk about all of those in there. The one that I wanted to mention again is ColourPop What's Your Sign. I would say out of all of my older favorites, this is the one that I used most of 2019. I'm sure you guys are sick of me talking about this lip shade on my channel, but have you ever seen a more perfect nude? I don't know what I would do if ColourPop ever discontinued this because the formula is incredible, creamy, long lasting, very comfortable, but this nude shade is my perfect nude. Again, this is one of those products that I'm so confident about loving. If someone came and took away my whole makeup collection today and said, keep one of each category, this would be the lip shade that I would keep, no doubt about it. The other lipstick color and formula that I really loved in 2019 are the MAC Powder Kiss lipsticks. I know a lot of people weren't crazy about these, but I really did love them a lot. They have a very unique formula that's hard to describe unless you feel them on your lips. I would say that they are velvety on the lips, like a very interesting mix of like a matte and a creamy shade. This shade right here was my favorite in particular. This is the shade Mullet Over, which leans pretty peachy, but I would say throughout the year, these are the two classic bullet lipsticks that I rotated between. As far as liquid lipstick goes, I didn't try a lot. I would definitely say 2019 was more of a glossier for me. Creamy lips, comfortable lips, but the one liquid lipstick that I loved that I would use over and over again is this Giorgio Armani Lip Maestro liquid lipstick. This one is in the shade 500. It's definitely not transfer proof or totally dry down on the lips and I think that's a huge reason why I like this so much because it has those long lasting qualities and strong pigmentation qualities of a liquid lipstick while still remaining nice and comfortable. Last but certainly not least, I have a lip gloss and I have three favorite glosses that I rotated between this year. So the first one that I loved, I will start off with because it's drugstore and that is the Wet n Wild Mega Last Liquid Catsuit High Shine Lipstick. It's not a liquid lipstick, it's definitely more like a lip gloss and this one is in the shade Send Nudes. This is going to be definitely more of a pigmented gloss but it's very high shine and long lasting on the lips. I love this because even as the gloss kind of fades throughout the day, it still leaves color. So I guess in that sense it is kind of like a liquid lipstick. It's this beautiful pinky brown, a little bit more of a cool tone gloss, which I loved wearing. Can you guys see it there? But really high shine, almost made my lips look pretty wet. No surprise here, I absolutely loved the Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb in 2019. Last year in 2018, I did include the original Fenty Glow in my end of year favorites, but this year I found that I love the shade Fussy even more. Fussy is a little bit more of a pinky shade on the lips. So there's Fussy in the center right there, a beautiful shade sheer light pink shade. As you guys can see, definitely more sheer than the Wet n Wild. That one, of course, is more pigmented. But this was just like a beautiful throw on the lips every single day. Definitely my favorite lip gloss, not only of 2019, but of all time. And lastly, the last gloss that I wanna share with you, again, is the House Laboratories gloss. This one is in the shade Corset. This lip gloss is probably the most wet looking lip gloss that I have in my whole collection. It has a little bit more of a thick formula to it. It is a little bit sticky. I won't lie to you guys there, but it makes the gloss last all day. And it's not an uncomfortable sticky to where your lips stick together or you get those lines when you like press your lips together. It definitely doesn't do that, but this is the most wet looking shiny lip gloss I have ever owned. And it is this one on the end right here. So this one is a little bit more peachy. It goes really nicely with the House Laboratories lip liner that I also own. And as you guys can see the shine on this, 
is so intense. This makes my lips look so plump when I layer this on top of other lipsticks, but it's also perfectly beautiful on its own just for like a sheer wash of color. So those are my favorite glosses of 2019. Again, House Laboratories Corset, Fenty Fussy, and Wet n Wild Send Nudes. All right, you guys, so that is going to complete this video. I had so much fun filming this video and reminiscing on all of my favorite products of 2019. It took me a long time. I'm sure this video is a long one. So thank you so much if you stuck around. Also, thank you guys so much for absolutely everything in 2019. My channel definitely was growing in 2019. I gained so many amazing subscribers. So many amazing things happened to us in 2019, whether it was different brands reaching out to me or just different opportunities. Honestly, nothing would be possible without subscribers and people watching my videos. Doing YouTube is not always easy. I, it might seem like all rainbows and butterflies to you guys, but this is really hard sometimes. I get discouraged, I compare myself to other channels, and it's really just hard sometimes, but you guys keep me going and you guys make me seriously love doing this. So thank you guys so much again for everything. I am so excited to see what 2020 has in store for my channel, what 2020 has in store for us and our YouTube family. And I'm excited to see what new makeup we try in 2020. I'm sure the makeup launches are gonna keep going. I don't think they're gonna slow down. I just have a feeling we're gonna see more and more every single year. If you did enjoy seeing this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Also make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel before you leave. I would love to have you guys here as part of my little YouTube fam. If you don't want to miss out on any of my future videos, click that notification bell down below and you'll get notified every single time that I upload a new video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Here's to 2020 and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.